that word power is seldom even heard in the black community. What, what do you think is the impact of this? That's not even discussed, it's not even talked about. We have, again, this gets back to that influence thing. We have come to believe that power means militance, violence, and aggressive attack. We don't understand that that is not power. Power is thinking. Power is the mind, the ability to affect people's minds. Once you control their minds, you can make them violent or docile. You can make them nice or you can make them mean. Once you affect people's thinking, you can make them stand up or sit down. You can make them buy what you want them to buy. In fact, you can make them even bring you their hard-earned money to you to buy your stuff regardless of how ragged it is. Now, once you've been able to do that to people's thinking, then that is real power. We then have to understand that there's nothing wrong with having power. The power that influences thinking. When our values can begin to influence the world, the kinds of values we've had historically as an African people, the kinds of values of mutual respect for people, the fact that in Africa, on the, excuse me, on the slave plantations in South Carolina and Alabama and Mississippi, throughout the most oppressive parts of the world, our homes have always been homes where people could find a sense of support, caring, forgiveness, and human concern and sensitivity. We've always been able to do that. Those values have got to begin to affect the world in a way that the world can begin to respond that way, otherwise the world is going to be destroyed. The power that we've got to develop is the kind of power that can begin to correct faulty human thinking that makes people believe that their power is in their fists, in their missiles, in their military budget, as opposed to thinking that their power is in their ability to change the thinking of people, to change the direction of people, to change the orientation of people, to make people begin to move in a more human direction to deal with the problems of humanity. Now, in terms of your, uh, the other point that, I, that you asked about, and that is in terms of the fact that many people experience this richness of this culture, the richness of the African civilization, and still come out confused about their own direction. I, I, I didn't address that point. I want to say something about that. It turns out that the human mind is incredibly tricky. People can perceive things and still not experience them. For example, I noticed that many people of the 800 people who've come along with this, not many people, some people, have been much more uh, excited about the items in the bazaars than they have about the learning the experience of the monuments, the history, the richness of it. Uh, in other words, uh, I, many people have spent most of the day sleeping rather than being engaged in the kind of, the nighttime discos, the night parties at the pool have attracted sometimes people who wouldn't even go out to en endure the sun, endure the struggle of what is engaged in learning. The process of learning is always a tedious, struggle-oriented process. Now, un unfortunately, I I'm really pleased to say that's a limited number of people, but I would expect that those people will leave here unchanged. They will complain about the fact that there was not uh, 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 enough air conditioning. Uh, they will complain about the discomfort of the heat in the environment. They will complain about the amount of walking that was done. But they'll have very little experience of the learning that takes place when you begin to understand a monolith, uh, uh, an incredibly huge and powerful culture such as this and what brought that culture into existence. Even though I don't expect that any of us will leave here with even a beginning grasp of the richness of this culture. I mean, I mean, in terms of understanding Nile Valley civilization, I think we are so far from beginning to even grasp the, the, just the rudiments of what it was about, other than seeing its manifestations, that I don't even, uh, you know, I think that we're just like years away from understanding the complexity of the understanding that went into that culture. But what we will all leave here with are two things, those of us who I think have really committed ourselves to the learning of this. We will leave here with a profound respect for this ancient African civilization. We will have to say, my God, those brothers and sisters were bad. They put together something that the world will always be baffled by. And we will go back into Western computerized high-tech culture with a greater sense of, you know, this ain't nothing. These folks are able to transport multi-ton multi obelisks along the Nile Valley 
uh, for hundreds of miles utilizing what we would think of as primitive transportation technique. But it was so primitive that they were able to move it better than modern technology was able to move those things. These people are able to identify spots of spiritual energy that somehow brought about learning simply by presence and healing simply by being there. That they were able to translate high, profound, spiritual truths in ways that have impacted upon even the most meek and humble members of the society. Now, we don't know how they did that. What we all have to know, though, is that we have to respect them for having done it simply by what they can show us in terms of what they've been able to accomplish. So the people, though, who have learned that, who've experienced that, who've come to be puzzled by that, who wonder, who have leave here with questions about how all of that took place, those people will never be the same. They will not be able to go back to American culture and want to imitate European American culture again. More so than being impacted by the leather goods they bought or being impacted by the gold items they bought, they will return to, to America absolutely committed to trying to make everybody in the Western world know, look, look at us. Look what African people did. Let's correct these history books. Let's correct this teaching that taught us that the columns that we call the Doric and Ionian and the Corinthian columns came out of Greece. Let's let our role, let's let people know that those things had their precedent and that the Greeks and the Romans learned that from African people. Th th those of us who have really been profoundly impacted by that will be changed. We'll have a clear sense of our mission. All of us will become teachers. We will be teaching our children, we'll be teaching our colleagues, even those of us who can't teach, who almost are inarticulate, will be constantly trying to take people and show them exposure to these kinds of ideas. So those who have really experienced this will know what to do. Those who have experienced the Western way of doing this sunglasses, tourist hats, let's go to the bazaar, which is fine. That's a, I've been, spent a lot of time in the bazaars myself. But certainly, I've tried to learn something by being here. And those who have really learned have changed, and those who have not learned have not changed. To what extent do you think we are resigned to being ruled by white people? The resignation, again, comes out of self-ignorance, self-disrespect. And we are resigned as long as we believe that the only people who've ever done anything in the world are white people. As long as we believe that the only competence and the only human intelligence that has reached any plateaus or peaks of success have been white intelligence. As long as we believe that, we are resigned to their rulership. Once you begin to know, as we now know, about the richness of Setai I, about the power of Ramesses II, about the richness of ne Nefertari, once you begin to know the richness of the wisdom of the book of the gates and the book of the dead, the book of coming forth by day, once you begin to know the, the, the ability to build the kind of spiritual, psychological, technologically efficient structures of the Great Pyramid, once you begin to understand how medicine was practiced with a competency far beyond anything we understand today that brought together spiritual, psychic, and biological medicine long before anyone understood anything about current psychosomatic medicine. Once you understand that we were able to profoundly impact the growth, the development, and the change of the world before the world even knew a lot of those things, then you will no longer be resigned to white people's rulership over you ever again. I will never be able to accept anyone's definition of my mind ever again once I've understood that I was the original ones to define mine. I will never be willing to accept other people's definition of my reality now that I understand that I can better define my reality than anybody else. So the resignation comes out of self-ignorance and out of a disrespect for self. Once you love yourself, once you respect yourself, once you know yourself, you will never lie down and accept anyone's authority over your life again.